Sports. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. This session is build generative AI powered applications using Postgres and the PG Vector extension. My name is Shayan Sanyal. I'm a principal data specialist solutions architect here at AWS. And I focus on our managed Postgres database services, which is RDS and Aurora Postgres. So the fundamental question is why use Postgres for vector search? Now, there are good reasons for this. A lot of the times, customers come to us asking for whether I can use my existing applications using Postgres as the backend that can really improvise and support these generative AI workloads. So existing applications which use Postgres are constantly now being updated to support new generative AI tools, such as Amazon Bedrock. Now, Amazon Bedrock is a fully managed service that makes foundation models from Amazon and a few other leading AI startups available through an API. So you can choose from various foundation models to find the model that's best suited for your use case. Of course, with Postgres, existing client libraries work without any modifications. So we are talking about drivers like JDBC, ODBC, and other ORM frameworks. A big advantage is your ability to keep transactional as well as Gen AI workloads in the same database, giving you the benefits in terms of query performance. Now, Postgres can also act as a persistent transactional store of choice while working in tandem with other vector search systems, such as OpenSearch. Both Postgres native data types that have supported AI and ML workloads for quite a while now, called Array and Cube, they have some limitations for supporting modern Gen AI workloads. More specifically, the Array data type does not support index for nearest neighbor queries, as well as the Cube data type is limited to only 100 dimensions. Now, before we get into what PG Vector is, let's understand a little bit about what Postgres extensions are. Now, Postgres is designed to be e easily scalable, extensible, and Postgres extensions do this by adding extra functionality to your database by modifying and enhancing certain processes. Moreover, Postgres extensions can help with some of the limitations you may find with vanilla Postgres such as working efficiently, let's say, with time series data. Now, most Postgres databases are using one or the other extension. You may have heard of PG start statements that's useful for tracking statistics on the queries executed by a Postgres database. PostGIS, that extends Postgres to handle spatial data and data types. Postgres foreign data wrappers and so on. Now, Amazon RDS and Amazon Aurora Postgres support over 90 extensions. In addition, Trusted Language Extensions for Postgres is an open source development kit for building these Postgres extensions in a few popular trusted languages, such as JavaScript, Perl, PL Rust, and PL PG SQL. Now, Trusted Language Extensions, or TLE, allows you to build high-performance Postgres extensions and safely run them on your RDS or Aurora Postgres databases. Now let's talk about PG Vector. PG Vector is an open source extension for Postgres to enable vector search. The way PG Vector enhances the capabilities for the core Postgres engine is twofold. Number one, it adds a new data type called vector. And number two, it provides couple of different indexing techniques, HNSW and IVF flat for three different distance strategies, namely L2 distance or equilibrium distance, in a product and cosine similarities. In doing so, it now you'll see is basically overcoming the limitations of both the array and the cube data types. Now, as of this recording, PG Vector supports up to 16,000 vector dimensions, 
and vectors with up, with up to 2000 dimensions can be easily indexed. Of course, PG Vector is supported on both RDS for Postgres as well as Aurora Postgres compatible edition. Now, a little bit of a brief overview of our Amazon Aurora and RDS Postgres databases. So Amazon Aurora and Amazon RDS are relational database services offered by AWS that combine the speed and availability of high-end commercial databases with the simplicity and cost effectiveness of open source databases. Now in the context of PG Vector, both Amazon Aurora and RDS are capable of storing billions of vector embeddings directly in the database. They're of course, capable of supporting high performance native indexing for accelerating vector similarity search. The other benefit is of course, these systems are integrated with retrieval augmented generation technique for enriched search accuracy. And there are of course, plugins available for frameworks like Langchain to simplify application development. Some of the common use cases that we've seen PG Vector being used for are product recommendations, sentiment analysis, chatbot applications, question answering, fraud detection, and many, many more. Now, PG Vector introduces a new data type called Vector. It supports IVF flat, and more recently, the HNSW indexes. IVF flat is, of course, a short form for inverted flat file. And in this technique, similar vectors are grouped together in clusters, which we call as lists. So for searches, vectors are compared within the same cluster, and that basically improves the performance. Another common indexing algorithm is HNSW, which stands for Hierarchical Navigable Small World. And HNSW graphs are among the top performing indexes for vector similarity search. Now this specific indexing strategy is available with PG Vector 0.5 release and above. Now by default, PG Vector performs exact neighbor search. That is, it will provide perfect recall, but you can also use approximate nearest search, which trades some recall for performance. Now the metadata and your relational data can be co-located alongside your vector embeddings within the same table. From a tuning perspective, you control the type of distance used for proximity calculations. And PG Vector, as we saw before, provides three different operators. One for equilibrium or L2 distance, second for cosine distance, and third for inner product. There are a couple of other parameters for tuning, such as the probe and the lists, which are more around performance tuning, and they will allow you to adjust performance over recall. Now usage for PG Vector is pretty straightforward for those who are already familiar with Postgres. You first create the extension, you then create a table with the vector type attributes. In this example, the column name is embedding, as well as the vector dimension is three. You use the insert statements to add rows with the vector data, just like you would do in typical Postgres. You would optionally create an index for better performance. And finally, select is where we get the capability to carry out the semantic similarity search. Now in this statement, pay close attention to the order by expression, where this particular operator is equilibrium distance. For search optimization, indexes can be created for each type of operator with PG Vector. So the vector data type allows you to perform three types of searches on the stored vectors. Now L2 distance or Euclidean distance is a widely used distance metric. It works on the principle of the Pythagoras theorem and signifies the shortest distance between two points. So for L2 distance, you use the vector L2 ops axis method. The inner product, also known as the dot product of two vectors is an operation that performs element wise multiplication and the sum of elements of each vector. So for inner product similarity, you can use the vector IP ops access method. 
And finally, for cosine distance, cosine similarity is the cosine of the angle between the vectors. So for performing a cosine similarity search, you would use the vector cosine ops access method while creating the index. Now, the PG vector 0.5 release was announced very recently, which basically one of the highlights was the HNSW indexing scheme. And what it does is it will give you better performance in comparison to IVF flat. Now, one of our colleagues here, uh, Jonathan Katz, I've linked his blog in the bottom, has performed some extensive benchmarks. And please feel free to go over his blog to get more details. In general, IVF flat indexes are very fast to build, but have lower recall. Now, in contrast, HNSW will take longer to build indexes, but can achieve much better recall. However, there are still areas for improvement for HNSW, and more specifically around the index size and build times, which we will certainly see in future releases for PG Vector. Overall, adding HNSW indexing is a major step forward for PG Vector and will help Postgres be a high performance vector database. Now let's take a look at a quick demo where we demonstrate a question answering chatbot application using PG Vector on Amazon Aurora Postgres and using Amazon Bedrock for the large language model. So in this example, we are we have ingested the open source Postgres documentation and we are going to ask a few questions for our documentation. Let's start with what are the different index types in Postgres? Now, the model is smart enough to actually peruse the entire 3000 page documentation and give us a nice summary in bullet point format. The popular technique that is very useful these days is called retrieval augmented generation. Now, what we're doing here is you'll notice that when I ask a follow-up question, I'm going to ask, when are they not useful? I'm not going to specify indexes or anything. It's basically they is the keyword, which is not useful. So in this case, my application should be intelligent enough to understand the previous chat history. And you'll see here that I'm able to understand my index. This question is related to my indexes and it gives a nice summary response of when indexes are not useful. Now, I've also ingested my Aurora documentation for this app, and I'm gonna ask a question which we get asked a lot on the field. So what are the key differences between Aurora Serverless V2 and Aurora Provisioned? As cliched as it sounds, you'll see the answer is, of course, it is use case dependent. But it also does a great job in providing a lot more attributes in which you can differentiate the two engines. Now, Langchain is a common framework that helps you integrate a lot of these libraries. So PG Vector has a direct integration with Langchain. So is Hugging Face as well as Bedrock. Now, these are some very popular open source tools and techniques that are used for building these Gen AI applications. And you'll see it's very easy to integrate it with Bedrock with Boto3. Now with that, there are a few more PG Vector improvements in the pipeline. So number one is product quantization, which is useful for vector compression. There's improved pre-filtering indexing. There's support for additional data types and dimensions, including two byte and one byte float and integers respectively. Parallel query is going to be supported as well. And so is parallel index builds for HNSW, which currently in its recent state supports concurrent inserts. Now you can get started with PG Vector on our managed database services by scanning the QR code linked here or by going to this website. This includes a self-serve workshop with Aurora Postgres and PG Vector followed by a couple of other helpful resources to help you get up and running very quickly. That's all we have for you today. Thank you for your time and see you in the next one.